friends, welcome to Carrie's Culinary Crafts where we talk all things food. And today, what we are going to be doing is some canning. Uh, now, if you're new here, welcome um, to on my channel here. All we do is talk, do everything food, whether it's uh, preserving food through canning, uh, fermentation, or dehydrating, um, freezing, you know, all the good stuff, gardening, and also we do a lot of um, food, long-term food storage as well. So if any of that interests you, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. I've got a lot of playlists on my channel that show the different categories of things that I do, so I bet there's something down there that will interest you. Um, but today we're going to go ahead and do some canning. Um, I got a half a bushel of green beans from uh, a local farm and I'm going to go ahead and get those canned up. Uh, I used to grow green beans but I could never grow enough for me to preserve from year to year. So instead of taking up that space with green beans I just decided you know what I'll just I'll just um, get it from a local farmer and support them and then I could use that space in my garden for something else. Um, maybe sometime down in the future when we have a bigger property then perhaps I'll be able to you know put enough green beans but green beans is one of our favorite vegetables so we do have them often and I just can't I just can't grow enough here to I can grow enough for us fresh eating and maybe putting a few cans up but never enough for me to last throughout the year because we probably go through at least one quart a week at least sometimes two um so I'm gonna go ahead and get canning oh something just went in my eye um get canning the green beans and I'm going to be using my outdoor kitchen. So that's kind of why I'm inside right now. I got my sunglasses ready and I just wanted to film this intro for you because we're going to be going outside and I am i don't really talk much whenever I'm outside. I don't want neighbors to think I'm some crazy lady or something like that. So, um, but we'll be going outside. I will set up the camera so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. This is a, a pretty simple process. Um, really all that we're going to be doing is packing in the green beans and you can be putting in, um, you can put water in to fill it up, but I'm going to go ahead and use some um, bone broth that I have. I've got tons of bone broth and if you guys have seen any of my canning tours, um, you you'll know and I will leave a, a link up here if you haven't seen it and you want to take a look at what I have in my canning pantry um, but I have so much stock so I want to go ahead and just use stock in with the green beans instead of just plain water so I will be doing that and then we will be um, since it's a low acid food we will need to pressure can them and I'm going to pressure can them on my uh, camp chef um, stove that I have out there. I have a two burner Camp Chef stove that I use for canning in the summertime. So with that, let's get started and I will meet you outside in my outdoor kitchen. Okay, so I won't bore you with this whole process of me doing this half bushel. So I just went ahead and put it on time lapse for you. Um, it actually did not take me long. It didn't take me as long as I thought it would. It was about 30 minutes of cutting off the ends and slicing up the green beans to put in the jars. Uh, so about 20 minutes for a half a bushel. And a half a bushel makes about 13 to 14 quarts. Um, I have 13 packed quarts and there was a little bit left over that I figured I would just keep those for fresh eating. Um, since it wasn't quite, I don't think it was quite enough to fill up an entire quart jar. It may have been, but I wanted to keep some for fresh eating. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in just a little bit of canning salt here. I'm just sprinkling a little bit just to, um, 
I like to put just a little bit of salt in all the things that I can, just so during the canning process, you know, it gets dissolved and really brings out the flavor of what is in there. And also remember, I use, I will be using um, homemade stock with this also. So it's going to be even more flavorful. Um, but if you don't have stock or you don't want to use stock, then just go ahead and use plain water. That is what I have always done. Um, I've never used stock until this year. And the only reason I'm using it is because I have so much stock and I have so many bones in my freezer that are waiting to be used to make more stock. So I'm just using my stock with, for anything and everything that I can use it for. So I went ahead and used it in these uh, green beans and yellow beans. I like both of them. So um, when I talked to the, the farmer that I always get them, um, when I told him last week, I said, you can give me a mixture of both, you know, green and yellow, whatever you have the most of. If you have mostly green beans, then just give me green beans. But um, that's the nice advantage of you know, talking to the farmers that you are getting things from you, if you ask them for something, they are more than happy to do whatever it is that you would like them to do. And um, what's even really nice about this farm, it's an Amish farm, well, Mennonite farm, um, that I get my veggies from, but they also wash their produce really, really well. So that's kind of nice. So. You know, I do like to go ahead and hose everything down because usually it's in a big, you know, um, bushel basket and I will just like, you know, give it a quick hose down, but they do that process as well. So there's never really any dirt or anything on ours. So we are, luck I am lucky in that aspect that um, they are pre-washed. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my rims, make sure there's no residue on them before I put my lids on it. Uh, you want to make sure that, the, you know, there's nothing on there that would prevent your lids from sealing. So I'm going around and wiping all the jars, and then I will go ahead and add my new lids to my green beans and then put the rings on finger tight. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put some new lids on my jars and then put the uh, rings on finger tight and get them in my can. Remember when you're canning, uh, you need the water in the jars and the water in your canners. You need them to be the same temperature. So since I used hose, since I'm going to use hose water, to fill this up, it's going to be cold water, the same as this stock is cold. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my two canners uh, with some water. And you wanna fill it up to where um, your instructions say that you need to fill it up for your pressure canner. Um, there are lines on mine um, that show me where I need to fill it to. So just make sure that you check your instructions on how high you need to fill up your water. And then once I have this water in there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the propane turned on and get this water starting to heat up. And I'm going to get my jars into my canners.
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the canners turned on, and then I'll get my lids put on the canners. And I'm going to uh, bring it up to pressure, and once the steam starts coming out the top in a steady, strong stream, you're going to set your timer for 10 minutes. And once that 10 minutes is up, that is when you will put the weight on top of uh, your canner. And then when your weight starts to jiggle, that is when you're going to start your timer for 25 minutes. Um, I used all of quartz here, so it takes 25 minutes to can them. If you were using pints, you would only need to do for 20 minutes. And then once your timer goes off for that 25 minutes, you want to go ahead and uh, turn off the heat and let your canners alone. Let the pressure come down on its own. Once it comes down to 0% pressure, then you can go ahead and take off the weight and you can lift off the lid. Remember, when you lift it, lift it away from your face. And then you want to leave them in there for at least five minutes for them to acclimate to the outside temperature. And here is a shot of my canners doing its magic. And here is the first round of my green bean canning for summer 2023. And the first canning for the Every Bits Counts Challenge that is hosted by Three Rivers Homestead. And after all that canning, I thought I deserved myself a nice refreshing limeade.